So hello everybody. I hope this is, yeah, it says I'm live. Okay. Hopefully it's working. Um, I am excited. I'm back to show you um, this cool little pop-up calendar that I designed. <clears throat> this is using our, um, I just lost the name of it. I think it's called Days to Remember. I lost my stamp set. It's somewhere around here on my desk. <laughs> But um, I'm not going to spend all this time. Oh, I have it open right here. This is how crazy I am. Okay, yeah, days to remember. This is the stamp set we're going to use today. And we're going to make these cool little pop-up calendars that sit on your desk. I don't know if you can see that very well. Let me get my video so I can see. So I can see what I look like. And then I can see if you guys can see it very well. Okay. So, yeah, this is how it sits. It just, it, you can open it like this and fold that under and then you can close it up and put it in a card if you want or in an envelope I'm sorry put it in an envelope to give to somebody um if you're going to send it in the mail it's a little bit thick so um I would probably definitely wrap it in like plastic first before you put it in the envelope or something to where these things don't get caught when it's running through the whatever those cancellation stamp cancellation machines are whatever they are anyways um so yeah i would just or put it in a bubble wrap mailer anyways they're really fun to give though this time of year in the last couple months of the year i make a lot of these to give away to um teachers and different things like that um they're just really fun for them to sit on their desk all year long and have something to look at and i i picked this um saying let me find oh this is from the garden bird houses says um hope each moment of your day is as special as you are and i thought that was a cute one to put on the bottom of these that they could just see year round and every time they look at their calendar hopefully they'll be having a good day so anyways um i was gonna show you a few different ones that i've made and we're gonna make one today so like i said it's the the last couple months of the year it's november now and to me that's a special month because um November is Epilepsy Awareness Month. My computer just froze, so I'm hoping it was just the computer and not my phone, too. Hopefully you guys can still see me. Okay, so um, I have epilepsy, though. I got epilepsy um, almost nine years ago now, and uh, it definitely <laughs> turned my life upside down, so... Uh, November's a special month to me because it's um, epilepsy awareness and I like to do a little something for that and so the color for epilepsy is purple and so we're gonna do something in purple today just to um, celebrate that like I said um, I'm just trying to find all my pieces so to make the um, little this is what we're gonna make is a bunch of little um, calendars for each month and so I made myself a little grid paper here and I'm just going to show you how to make a couple of them and then I made the rest of them so you don't have to sit here all day but I, I cut these pieces and glued it to where I could just kind of slide a paper in here that fits <laughs> and so the size of paper that I used for this is um, two and a let me double check uh, two and a half by two and three quarters and so we're going to slide it in with the two and three quarters this way. Up and down would be two and a half. <laughs> um, if you guys want me to show you how to make one of these, just comment below. And if I get enough people who want me to, I'll make a video on that. But for me, it helps a lot. So I use that, and then I only need three blocks. The um, I think it's the H, I, and D. Those are the ones that I used. H, I, and D. And so um, I just mount these two. The this is going to be the long piece that has all the dates, and then the they have two different um, titles, or I don't know what you'd call it, like the the week titles, you know, for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Anyways, um, so they have Monday through Sunday, or they have Sunday through Saturday. I use the Sunday through Saturday one, but you could use either one that you want. So I put the calendar on this one, the weeks of the day on this one. 
day of the week. So I can't speak right now. Okay, days of the week on this one. And then this other block I swap out for the months. And so obviously on each one, I have to swap out a different one on this one for the month that I'm working on. So I just leave this stamp case open on the side over here that has the the months I can swap out real easy. And then on the other side over here, I open my chamois and just have it ready to clean stuff off because you kind of got to clean between each one. The only one you don't have to clean is the titles of the days of the week. Like I said, that one you can just, it, it's the same, but this one you'll have to stamp different parts of it. So you'll want to clean it each time. And then we're just going to switch out each of the um, months. So um, I'm going to start with January, obviously, so we'll grab January here, and I grabbed this big block because I want to be able to see. I've made these marks on here so I can line things up. I have this black mark behind, which is kind of where I want the tops of the letter, the tops of, the top of this word to be, but you can't really see it very well. I'm sure you can't see it on, on the, um, on the screen. I'm going to open or, uh, Gorgeous Grape and that's what we're stamping this in. So I've also made these lines on the side and I'll show you as I go kind of how I line things up. So I've made, like I said, I've used this big block to where I can kind of see all around it and see where I'm trying to line stuff up. If I used a small one it would be hard to see all those colors above. And so I'm just kind of using those two blue lines and centering it between those and then like I said you probably can't see the black line behind but I can kind of see where I was wanting to put that and it just helps guide it and make it easier to where they're all a lot easier to do okay so the next thing I do is the um month days and over here I made myself a little cheat sheet or whatever you know and so I have January it starts on a Sunday and it has 31 days one thing to definitely remember is how many days each month has in it, because that's one thing I messed up the first time I forgot, oh, every month doesn't have 31 days, but when you stamp it up, it's going to have all 31 stamped up. So there's some of them you're going to have to take off. And you can use the corner of your um, chamois to get it off, or I've used, I've cut a chamois in half this way and then taking the top two pieces and cut in half that way so I just have like a small one that I can grab that's easy to use so I keep that on the side over here too so I can kind of clean clean off the ones that I don't want to use like you'll see with the February so January it starts on a Sunday so I'm gonna line this up to where the one is the first one over here that I'm using and the nice thing about this stamp set is it's the exact same width of your stamp pad so if you figure out where your day is going to be, you can just line it up and don't tilt or move your stamp around. Just go up or down. And see, I got some on the side over here. So that's where you can kind of clean some off. It's nice to have the chamois on the side. Okay, so I got these lined up or inked up, which ones I want. And what I want is for the second line, I want it to be below that. So I'm going to try and make this as even as I can and make sure it's below that second line. And then stamp it down. There we go. And then I can take the titles of the days of the week, <laughs> initials for it. And then I want that to go either in between the lines or up closer to the top line depending on how many, because some of them, um, let me show you. I kind of pushed a little bit too hard on that one, so you can see it got a little wide. But So like this one here that has, instead of it being only four weeks there, it has five and then an extra one down here. So you can see I kind of had to scoot that one up just a, a hair, so that way we have enough room for it here. So some of them you have to wiggle a little bit, from where you have it but these lines help me figure out how to line it up and so that one's done we're going to move on to february and so i start with the whoops i better put a, a paper in here okay so i start with the title of the month
All right. And then next we're going to do the month calendar itself. And this one, so February starts on a Wednesday and only has 28 days next year. So we're going to only have four on the top. So if it starts on a Wednesday, we want it to go right. Whoops, I went over too far. There we go. Right there is where we want to be. So we're inking up the one, two, three, four on the top row, which would be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I think I got a little bit on the one next to it. So I'm just going to clean that a little bit. And then what we want to do, this obviously inked up all the way through 31. So we want to take off the 31 and the 30 and the 29. And I flip it over, just kind of dab it and make sure you get it all off because you don't want that part to stamp on the paper. We want that, that to be clean. But we don't want it to be wet. So you want to make sure you just kind of dab it. I've left it too wet sometimes and gotten my paper wet. <laughs> okay. So this one will line up again underneath. There we go. And see, that way we only go through the 28 days. All right. And then we're going to do the initials for the days of the week. And it's nice having those lines just to help line everything up. There we go. All right. So I've done the rest of them now to where we don't have to go through all of them, but I just wanted to show you that it's really easy. Most of them have 31 days, but there's one, two, three, four that have 30 in them and then February that has either 28 or 29. So I just kind of kept that on the side there to help help me know which day to start with. Whoops. And how many it had in it. So the next thing we want to do is we want to take all these little calendars we've made and put them in the right order. So I just put December last. Usually I go through them uh, when I'm making them and then just put them on top of each other. So usually I just go through and like this put them all the right way because they're usually backwards let's see may april march okay and then we have february and january okay so once i've done that i stacked them all up and i didn't mention in the beginning i've cut all of these out of like uh printer or copier paper because it's a lot thinner we're going to want to staple through all of this and if you did each of those pieces cardstock first of all it would be hard to to rip them off each month it would, you would have to be really careful to not make a mess with those. And um, so it's easier to rip these off. And then also it's a lot easier to staple through all of those because if we had all of that as cardstock, I don't know that we'd get the stapler through it. But the very back piece I do cut of cardstock because we do want a hard piece to have it anchored to and a piece that we can put glue on to stick it to the the DSP that we have behind it. So I cut a same piece or same size, um, two and a half by two and three quarters. And that one goes on the very back. And then I line all this up the best that I can and hold it real tight. And then I come in here with my stapler and I just try to kind of line it up straight and off to the side. You don't want it real close to the middle because once you get back into November and December, they're wider and going to take up more space. So you, you don't want them covered by a staple. So then we'll go on the other side and we'll staple that too. And there you go. And then I just check on the back to make sure it went all the way through and we're good to go. So there's our calendar all set. The next thing we're going to do, we used Gorgeous Grape for this. Like I said, I'm going to use purple colors because of it being Epilepsy Awareness Month. And um, so I chose Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape that we're going to actually um, make our own DSP today. And I am using, sorry, I'm just organizing all my stuff here. I'm using the Seasons of Chic um, stamp set. And we are going to stamp on our own stamp on our paper today with the flowers. So I went ahead and cut the pieces of paper already. So um, I will tell you, let's see, maybe it would be easier 
right now just to, to cut the piece of gorgeous grape. So you're going to take, this is going to be for the, the piece that we're going to anchor it to, the long piece in the back, which is really just a half of a piece of paper. And so we're going to cut, we're going to take a piece of paper and we're going to cut it long ways at four and a quarter. So it'll be four and a quarter by 11. And then we're going to turn it sideways. We're going to get our blade out of the way and we're going to um, score it right at four. And then if you wanted to open the arm, you could go down to eight or you could just take this line you just scored and take it to the four and then score again, if that makes sense. So we're going to score it at four inches and then at eight inches. But since I'm lazy and don't want to open the arm, <laughs> I just took the first score line down to four again and did it as uh, again. Okay, so now that we have that, we want to cut a piece of DSP at um, four inches by three and three quarters to fit right on here. And um, we're going to make our own DSP today because I wanted something really purple. And I couldn't find anything that really had a bunch of gorgeous grape in it, which was the color I really wanted to use. So. So we cut a piece, if you're cutting your DSP, you're going to want to cut it um, four inches wide. And then when you turn it sideways, you'll cut it at three and three quarters inches. And then you'll cut another piece off that's an inch long. And that piece that is an inch long is the one that goes on the inside here that holds our sentiment. And then the other piece obviously goes on the front. Then, oh, also, we'll need a piece of... Um, whatever the base card is that you're using, a piece of that, which is, um, let me measure. I completely forgot. I know it's three quarters of an inch wide, but let me see the length. Um, it's three inches. So three inches by three quarters of an inch. And then this piece inside is two and three quarters inch by five eighths inch and that is just because if of uh, the size of my sentiment if you wanted to change the size of your sentiment you could change that size um, but I liked it being the same width as the calendar so they're both at um, two and three quarters inches wide and so that way it just kind of lines up and looks good with it in my eye but you can use anything you want down there so these are the pieces of paper that we will need cut for that. Um, I forgot the piece of the gorgeous grape. Let me grab some of that really quick. All right, and we wanted this to be three quarters of an inch. By three inches. All right. And that will mount on there. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to get rid of these stamps real quick just so they're out of my hair over here. And so out of the um, Seasons of Chic stamp set, like I said, we're going to grab the two flowers which I have them already mounted up here. And then we're also going to grab the paint splatter. I'll show you in a second which one that is. So this one right here, the paint splatter. And it looks a lot smaller on the front than it actually is. It's about twice that size. But we're going to use that just to kind of fill in around the sides a little bit wherever we want. All right. And I'm going to bring a piece of paper out because I just don't like to get my... Um, grid paper all dirty. I like to be able to take the dirtiness away and let you see the cleanliness after. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take the, the filled in part of the flower and we're going to do that one in Highland Heather first. All right, and I'm going to do this like if you look at the other ones, all we really see is like three quarters of an inch around the outside. So what's in the middle here doesn't really matter as much to us. 
Um, what I really want though is it, it just to not be like the same flower all the way all the way around. So I want to make it still some kind of different pattern where some look up a little further. See, I'm glad that part won't show. I accidentally touched the side there. So I was going to be like turning this as I go too. See, I should have done the inside here first. <laughs> And worked my way towards the outside, but either way, it still looks good. Um, whoops. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna do, whoops, that one didn't cover very well. There we go. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So the next thing we're going to do, we'll put away the Highland Heather and we're going to grab the gorgeous grape. Oh, you know what I, I forgot to do is the bottom one. We need to still keep that out because this little piece needs it too. Should be taking my time not slapping this on so hard and I'd get better coverage. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I want a tiny piece down here. Okay. So now we have those two pieces. So now we'll put away the Highland Heather. Whoops. Man, I'm just grabbing everything, slapping it around. My epilepsy is really showing today, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so we're going to grab the outline part of the flower now, and we're going to do this in gorgeous grape right over the top of these. And I just started playing with this today, so I'm still figuring it out which way it goes. I'm trying to find my, my um, key points I want to line up, you know? Okay, I'm just going to turn this because I know kind of what I'm looking for now. I think this looks so pretty on here, though. It really... You know, I didn't know how they would look lined up because sometimes things line up really well and sometimes they are more abstract and these ones line up just perfectly. Um, let's see which way this one. Oh, I think it's it's really hard to tell. <laughs> I don't know which one way I did that one. We'll say, we'll just say it's going like that. <laughs> All right. It's hard to line them up <laughs> without my head right over them. Some of them I'm getting a little off. But that's okay. You get the point. I feel like I'm doing a terrible job lining these up. I need to practice with it more though, obviously. I've used a few of the things in the stamp set, more the leaves because of it being fall right now, but I love this flower too. It's so pretty. How does this one line up? <laughs> I think 
maybe I had it right this way. Maybe I should have done the uh, outline first, <laughs> and then I would have known where I was. Let's do... I think it goes about like that. All right. Now we got to do the bottom part. The nice thing about this stamp set is it it looks very um, just not really abstract, but it, it fills in to where what is what the what's the word I'm looking for? Like it's easy, you know, if you it's it's easy to cover your mistakes and stuff if, if you have any spots where it doesn't look exactly perfect like up here you can tell when you look really close that I haven't lined things up perfectly but it's kind of splotchy looking anyways and we're gonna put more um, paint splatters kind of over the top of them anyway so it's gonna cover a lot of that up and we won't have to worry about it so it's really easy and forgiving that's that's the word I'm looking for it's really forgiving if you're not, you know, perfect at stamping <laughs> or easy, you know, if it's really hard for you to line things up. <laughs> I think I went the wrong way on that one. Didn't quite match. That's okay. We only have a couple of them left here. Um... I cannot figure that one out. I'm having a hard time lining it up. <laughs> Just keep doing circles till you figure it out, right? Hmm. Yeah, that one's really having a hard time lining up. I'm going to go back this way. I'm just going to hit it like that. I think that will still kind of cover it. All right, pretty good. And this one, I don't know what edge of it I used either, but that's okay. All right, that looks pretty good. And the last thing we're going to do is our greeting, which, like I said, is out of the garden birdhouses. And let me just grab a block. And we're going to do that one in the gorgeous grape as well. Actually, no. Well, yeah, yeah, we'll do the... I keep changing my mind. We'll do this, the gorgeous grape, though, because I do want it to stand out and match with the ones that I already made above. I hope my hair's not in the way. Part of that doesn't look covered very well. Okay, let's stamp this greeting here. Awesome. Okay, we can close this up. And then, like I said, I'll take this dirty piece of paper away. And now you can see what we actually made. It doesn't look so bad now, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take this piece here. And I like to use our liquid glue for this one just because it's such a small piece. And sometimes you need to move it around a little bit. So I just use a little bit of liquid glue on that one. And it is a little bit wider on the sides than on the top. I wanted it to be that way. So don't try to, to line it up perfectly with the sides and the top because it should be wider on the sides. All right. I think that looks pretty good. I love that our Tombow glue is so forgiving. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? I'm going to have to bring my paper back out because I wanted to do the splatter on these. And I forgot to do it. Okay, we're going to use the Highland Heather. And I'm just going to do the splatter kind of in these white spots in between the flowers. And it's okay if it overlaps the flowers because we did the flowers in Highland Heather, so it's the same color. Oops. But this will give more texture where it's not just 
plain white in between all the flowers. I see a flower I forgot to to do the gorgeous grape on. See what happens when you get in such a rush? My day just has not gone as planned today. And I ended up having to wake up my son to run and pick up an order that I had put in that was already ready and <laughs> he took forever to fall asleep. So then I tried to get him to go back to sleep and that wasn't happening. I'm going to fix this one that I found really quick here that needed the gorgeous grape on it. Right there. All right. Now we're good. Look at that. Okay, this will this stuff will stand out a lot better on there. I wanted the white to pop out and not be blending into what was in the back. Okay. So we're going to pull out our piece of cardstock that we cut of the gorgeous grape. And these are all the pieces that we're going to need. We have them all here. So let's go ahead and get this folded up. And we're just going to fold on our score lines that we made. And then I am going to use... Whoops. I'm going to use the stamp and seal this time to put these down. And so this little strip is going to go right on the inside where we would fold in the inside of this small piece. And I leave a little um, eighth inch lip around it. And then this one is going to go right up here. And you want to make sure you have it the right way because this way would be too long. So make sure when you put it on you have it facing the right way. All right. And we can kind of put this any way we want. There's not really a top or a bottom. I feel like I like that better though as the top. So... We're going to put it that way. I love these flowers. They just really turned out really good in the purple. I like that. <laughs> okay, and so for the um, calendar, I just used the stamp and seal on that too. And I just go right over the top of those staples. Anything that can grab the sticky. So I do all around the corners and then one right down the middle and one on each side of just straight down stripes because I want it to get nice, nice and sticky. And then I just put it right in the middle here. And then just push it down really good so the back stays. Perfect. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is put our greeting on there. And we are going to use um, some of our, by my scissors, some of our uh, dimensionals. But instead of using the dimensionals themselves, this is a really good one to use the edging stuff for. So what I do is I just kind of measure how much of it I'm going to need. So I think what I'm going to do on this one, I'm just going to go to the end of here. It's not going to go all the way to the end, but that is okay. We're just going to use this piece. Put it down just like that. And then even though this one's not used up on the other side I'm still going to get that piece to um, put in between so let's see all right we're gonna do from the end I think see if it lines up 
yeah all the way to here okay so we're going to cut this little spot here and then this should line up hopefully if i cut it right <laughs> nope i cut it too long okay let's see just a little bit too long we can just cut some of this off all right and then it kind of lines up but it works good because then you only have that strip that you can see on the sides all right and then with that <clears throat> we put this whoops make sure it's right side up put this right here in the middle and again the sides will be wider Just like that, and it should line up perfect with your calendar. And there you go. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. And so then when you want to fold it up, I just fold the small one in first and the big one over the top. Just like that. What do you guys think? I love this purple. Gorgeous Grape is one of my favorite colors. I love it. And it turned out really good. Oops, I'm a little off to the side. Sorry about that. I'm used to my uh, camera being on the other side, so I, I get a little off focus. Anyways, I hope you guys will try this out. This is a really fun one to make. And then, like I said, teachers, anybody that you can think of that works at a desk or has a desk, they're really fun just to sit on the desk and have that all year round. The only thing I'm having trouble with is I keep wanting to make Christmas ones, and it's not Christmas year round. So it's good to make um, just random things that will work for year round. Um, let me bring back some of these other ones so you guys can see the different styles. I've been just using up some um, old DSP. <laughs> so stuff that needs used up, I just, you know, gather it and make a bunch at the end of the year. That one doesn't want to stay down. I didn't burnish it very well, obviously. So there you go. So these are really fun. I hope you guys will give it a try. And if you do, I would love for you to head over to my Facebook page and post one on there. I would love to see it. It would be so fun. Um, my Facebook is in the description below. I have my VIP page. You can go over there and um, join it. And I would love to see all your creations that are inspired by the things that I make. Um, I wish this would focus a little bit. It's not not focusing very well just leaving everything blurry <laughs> anyway don't forget to subscribe and like like my video subscribe to my page join my VIP group uh, like me on Instagram follow me there all the things that you're on see if you can find me under Stampin Hands and um, I will keep trying to make stuff for you guys I'm excited to see what I inspire you to make um, we'll see you guys soon hopefully you have a great rest of your week Talk to you later.